Welcome to today's episode of Your Talk Time with Lindsay Bivens and Sonia Pilton Sam, where we bring together real people talking about real issues, coming up with real strategies and winning solutions. Yes, and we are so excited about our special guest today, none other than Pastor Liddell Wilson. Thank you for being with us, sir. Very happy Thank to be you. here with y'all. Very happy to be here. Yes, yes, so please, we want to jump right in with our time uh, and hear what you have going on. We want to know more about you, so please tell our viewers more about you. Okay, my wife and I are founding um, pastors of Next Level Christian Church in Eagle Lake, Texas. Um, we're entrepreneurs. We have a quick lube business where we do oil changes, tires, and things like that with automotives. Um, I have a 24-year-old son and have a one-year-old grandson. and. We just, we just all over the place all the time. Yeah. <laughs> Sounds like a busy and exciting life. Yes, well, tell us a little bit about how you got started. Well, with which, which one? Which, which, <laughs> with, with the wife, with the business, with the, which one? Which one do you want to know? Just jump right in. Well, well, one September the 10th, 1977, I was born. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good place to get That's started. Good. That's a good place well, to get started. The ministry, actually, this weekend when I'm here with y'all, is our ninth year in ministry. Awesome. Wow. The ninth church anniversary was this, our first, we started um, 2010, the first weekend of April, mm. and it's rolled back around again. Wow. And um, we started ministry, I had started ministry, I always went to church as, as a child, mm -hmm. played uh, instruments, organ, piano, and um, stepped out of ministry in 2010. Yes. And we've been going ever since with that. Um, I've been an entrepreneur. My first business, I think I was like 21 mm -hmm. when I had my first original, mm -hmm. my first business. Um, around 24, I got an 18-wheeler. That was another business I did. Mm -hmm. So I've just been after business ever since I was a little kid. Yes. Yeah. Wow. That's exciting. That's mm -hmm. exciting. So business, entrepreneur, active ministry, leading a ministry. Yes, what other things? I know a little bit about you, yeah. separate from <laughs> ministry and yeah. business. I know that you're an author, so yes, please tell us about the book you wrote. The book I wrote is Paulie the Praying Pup, and he, in this, he, his goal is to bring families back to prayer, and mm -hmm. his first assignment was to attack bullying, mm -hmm. was to come at bullying, and um, it's a lady that I know helped me publish it, and um, <laughs> <laughs> she's sitting at the table yes. in the middle with a white dress on. <laughs> and she really helped me bring that vision to mm -hmm. life. So he's been he's been published since February of 2018. Yes, yes congratulations, congratulations. You, so I can't have you talk about Polly the Praying Pup without going into some more detail about just the reason for writing the book. So tell us what was your inspiration for writing the book? Well, when I wrote the book at that time, I was in a real dark spot. My, I had just lost my cousin unexpectedly. We were like brothers, and I hadn't been out the house in about a couple of months. Mm -hmm. I was just in the house every day. And the day, um, the um, Thanksgiving morning, I woke up. We always go to my grandmother's house for Thanksgiving, mm -hmm. right down the street, and I just got up, and that story was on me. And yeah. I wrote the story in like 30 minutes. The mm -hmm. whole story was done in 30 minutes. And now, of course, I don't know what to do with that. I mm -hmm. just wrote it. But as I, I didn't realize that I was always protecting kids from bullies when I was little, yeah. but I hadn't connected it. I had mm -hmm. never connected that. That was really in my heart. And um, so I wrote it in like 30 minutes and I went to a conference and I was like, oh, I guess I'm supposed to publish this thing. <laughs> <laughs> and I met Miss, Miss Bivens just yeah. in the back of the room and mm -hmm. a connection happened that day. Yes, mm -hmm. awesome, awesome. And that's definitely something worthy of celebration. Yes, ma'am. It takes a lot of courage to yes, write a book. It's yes, a, yes. something you have to be vulnerable with. Yes, um, but I really want to hear just a little bit more about your heart for bullying. When you think about the things that are happening right. around this nation and really around the world um, in terms of kids experiencing you know, bullying, mm -hmm. um, and we've seen kids commit suicide. Right. Right. At behind being bullied, right. what are your thoughts? Like, if you could help eradicate mm -hmm. bullying, how would that look? The one way for me is is in the book, we dealt with the bully. Mm -hmm. We really dealt with what's going on with him. Mm -hmm. Because okay. a lot of times in bullying, the bully gets thrown to the side or put in detention or put in right. yeah. something, and nobody really, what's going on with him? Mm -hmm. So in the book, he explains why he, he kind of talks about why he was acting that way. And 
that's one thing I think was missing. We, you mm -hmm. know, of course we want to protect the one being bullied. Yeah. But sometimes you got to wonder what's up with this other kid. What's what's right. going on with him? And so in the book, um, and I think the way to eradicate it is because, you, of course, it's Polly the praying pup. Mm -hmm. And I think bullying is one of those things we don't pray about. Yeah. We just try to fix it. Mm -hmm. We just try to externally mm -hmm. separate the kids or do something physical. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But I think this whole bullying thing starts in the spirit realm like everything else. Awesome. Right. Right. Yes, yeah, that's exciting. Mm -hmm. What would you say um, is the biggest impact on your life so far from writing this book? Huh. <laughs> I've been able... The biggest impact I would say that I've been, my publisher says I shouldn't do this too much, but my, <laughs> my biggest impact is giving them away, and I know I'm supposed to sell them, but <laughs> just, just seeing the kid, we have our quick lube, and sometimes while they're there, mm -hmm. the families will get the book, I'll sell it or give it to them, and they'll sit there, and the parent will read it to yeah, them while they're right. waiting, yeah. and just to see the kid not, like, not want to let the book go after that. Yeah. They just, they making sure they got that book before mm -hmm. they leave. Mm -hmm. So I'm like, you never know what that kid was going through in that mm -hmm. book. Just to see the kids just cling to the book once they get it. Yes. That, that's really an impact on me right there. Awesome. I think that was an excellent question. Kind of mm -hmm. lead into, is it your goal to really go out and minister to and really serve more children in the same way? Are you looking for more kids to have that experience? I am. I am. Um, it's funny you bring that up because... Mm -hmm. I was telling my wife the other day, because I've been praying about the book, what's the next move, what mm -hmm. do I do? And he gave me five points to deal with. Awesome. Identity, value, love, purpose, and it's another one I can't remember. But those five things yes. is what we need to deal with with the person that's the bully yes. and the one being bullied. Mm -hmm. We need to make sure they have identity, love, mm -hmm. purpose, value, and it's one more. I can't remember off the top of my head. But those five that God gave me, mm -hmm. I believe we'll be able to pull some of the roots out of yes. bullying because bullying it, it goes back a long way mm -hmm. it goes mm -hmm. back a long way so i think getting to the root is establishing the identity mm -hmm. putting love back into it value yes. and purpose man and, and um I, I think that's one of the main things is, mm -hmm. is dealing with those points right there and mm -hmm. it's powerful that you talk about these principles and you've already yeah. touched on the fact yes, that a lot of times people they focus the attention on a child that's being bullied, right? right? right. And, and a lot of times, even in media and the school system, right. they kind of villainize right. the, the bully right. or the perpetrator. Right. And nobody really cares about the bully, you know, right. just right. in general. Right. Nobody really cares about why he's done mm -hmm. anything. So that's a unique difference just in the yes, whole bully conversation right. that you want to reach children who are, you know, being aggressive with right. other children right. or kind of, you know, um, projecting their right. upset and the things that, that have happened to them onto other yes, children. And I think uh, what you're doing is powerful. So thank you, ma'am. Thank, thank you. Thank you for helping me do it. <laughs> yes, <laughs> yes, we're excited. Okay, so I want to touch uh, on the identity piece that yes, you talked about because yes, I think that is so important today. Yes, ma'am. I work at a school where the bully actually is like a hero to some of the kids. Right. I think they see the bully's strength. Right. And so a lot of people don't have that strength, right? right. And so they see the bully as a strong person. Mm -hmm. And uh, the person that's getting bullied, they don't see the strength right. because it's happening to, to them, them. Right? right? And so I that's really want to dig deep into the identity portion. And I think, like when you said that, his really his strength that he's displaying mm -hmm. is a flip of his weakness. Mm -hmm. His vulnerability, he's trying to hide it. Mm -hmm. So him mm -hmm. being weaker than he's portraying so I have to overdo it in the, in, in the other area mm -hmm. and I think once a kid cause we had we, we found the preschool also mm -hmm. so with the preschool the main thing I teach like the leaders I tell them identify what's in the kid mm -hmm. so you'll know how to teach the kid yeah. so we always want to get that identity piece intact right away mm -hmm. and like you were saying with the um, with the bully being the hero mm -hmm. A lot of times, kids just want to be on his side so they he won't mess with them. You know what I'm saying? It's like, Superhero. Hey, man, you want to take your train? You want me to take your... What do you need me to do so you right. just won't get on me? But I think him... The bullying is a display of weakness. Yeah. But it's, it's, it's not... Um, I guess exp uh, explain like that, but really, mm -hmm. a lot of times the, the bullies, when you get them in a corner and really find out what's going on, mm. soft as a box of kittens, boy. That's Just they're, so, they're yeah. so true. <laughs> yes, so they're overcompensating. Oh yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. Mm -hmm. hmm. And what was uh, you mentioned another word? You said uh, uh, value. 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 Let's talk a little bit about value. I know with with value, um, I think a lot of people 
when you get identity, if, if you lack an identity, your value is going to be messed up. Mm-hmm. I think so. Once you get a hold of your identity and you find out what it is you're good at, mm-hmm. yeah. not you're trying to be what somebody else wants you to be or you're trying to copy, you having that original value of, mm-hmm. you know what, I'm good at instruments. Mm-hmm. I'm good at uh, the French horn. I'm good at drums. I'm good at running. When people begin to find their gifting, the gifting is mm-hmm. bringing the value. Mm-hmm. So instead of me, you know, trying to be someone else, I can start operating my original design, and then that's where my value comes from. Yeah. But a lot of times we don't realize that until we've grown and you know, mm-hmm. what I'm mm-hmm. <laughs> we really mm-hmm. like a little late sometimes on that. Right. Yes, ma'am. So I think if we can grab the kid and let him know, like, hey, you're unique, mm-hmm. and. Mm-hmm. You're unique, mm-hmm. and you're unique. Mm-hmm. So you're not going to look like everything around you. You may have some few things, but you don't have to try to look like somebody else to have value. Yeah. Yeah. Very good. Mm-hmm. Value, just being, seeing their own value. Right. Yes, yeah. ma'am. Because a lot of times they don't see themselves as valuable when they me- try to measure up against right. what they That's see. That's it. Comparison is, comparison is a trick. Yeah. Because Compar- as much as I may want to look like her, it ain't mm-hmm. going to happen. Right. Her mom and daddy didn't yes. have me. You right. know what I'm saying? It's just, it's not going to happen. Right. You know? right. Just yes. Me. Yes. Awesome. So that's, again, exciting to hear about Polly the Praying Pup. We want to talk about some other things you have coming down the pipeline. Yes, ma'am. So with respect to Polly and just your heart to really reach children mm-hmm. and have an opportunity to speak other places, where can they find out more information about Polly the Praying Pup? Polly has a website. Okay. com, and you can also um, go to Amazon. He's on Amazon, Polly yeah. the Praying Pup. Um, I feel like my teacher's in the room, so I'm trying to make sure I do it all right. <laughs> <laughs> but that's the only two places you can find him mainly. And yes. um, right now I'm working on, I want to do an audio book. Yes. Working on an audio book. I've actually written out the scripts for it. Mm-hmm. I've actually given the characters to people yeah so they can so we can have an actual audio mm-hmm. because i want to be able to when the kid is driving down the road and the parents mm-hmm. in the van the kid has something they can listen to even yes. at night before they go to sleep they can hear that story mm-hmm. uh over and over and over again and um i definitely want to be working on that right now the audio book to polly but www.polly the praying pup is where you can find it awesome awesome we love polly right yeah. and so <laughs> will you <Yeah. laughs> So tell us, if you will, I know, again, you have other things happening, and I, I kind of, a little birdie told me that you dabble a little bit, and excuse me, I don't want to be offensive with the word dabble, but <laughs> you have a passion for music as yes, well, ma'am. so tell us about your passion for music. Well, um, I've written I've written a CD, um, the CD's title is Go to the Nations. Mm. Um, I've been doing music for a long time i don't think i'm really good at anything i kind of do a lot of things Mm -hmm. i know how to play the keyboard enough to do what i need to do yeah you put notes in front of me i don't know what that is Mm -hmm. but um yes i'm working on music um my goal what i've what i'm what i'm dbaing this week is Mm -hmm. a m633 music and content wow and it's based out of matthew 633 Mm -hmm. seek ye first the kingdom Mm -hmm. so it'll be m633 music and content wow it's already been um registered in 2016 mm-hmm. i just hadn't done anything with it mm. so now i'm having some meetings set up to where um i got a studio i'm gonna be working out of where i can go there and finish mm-hmm. i've done some pre-recording some pre-taping mm-hmm. uh lay down some scratch vocals just for music production but now i'm ready to go in and really put the late the uh the lyrics on everything now. Uh, so will you be singing yes ma'am wow <laughs> i feel like i'm learning <laughs> something new about you Wait. Yeah. <laughs> That's what the great people say. Yeah. That's what the, all the greats say, uh, right? Yeah. We're going to figure it out. Yes. We gonna figure it out. yes I, I didn't know that you yeah. sang too. I don't say too much about yes. it. Watch it over there. Later. Many gifts. Yeah. <laughs> In the studio honors, we have a wife. With yeah. wife yes. Yes. She leaning. She leaning. She leaning. Yes. yes. Awesome. Yeah. Awesome. That sounds like great work. Mm-hmm. Um, and I know you mentioned you'll be going to lay vocals for yes, CDs. Ma'am. Like, tell me if you will, because something you just touched on is that this was some, a vision that God gave you a few years ago. Yes. Um, so I want to talk about getting a vision for something and then there's this wait. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. How do you deal, you know, what do you do in the waiting period when God re- reveals a vision to you and you can't move on it immediately? And this is something I'm learning. So yes. the key, I think, about waiting is you're preparing. Mm. 
Mm-hmm. If you look at it as waiting, you'll yeah. get discouraged. Yes. Well, why me? Why me? Mm-hmm. What I'm learning more and more about God is he certain things you can't even see mm-hmm. until you're ready to see them. Yes. yes. The same thing can be in a room with you next week, but since you've elevated a little bit throughout mm-hmm. that week, that room will look totally different. Okay. So I'm thinking a lot of the waiting turns into preparation, and it's not a lot of external preparation. It's a lot of internal preparation. Mm-hmm. It's a lot of me working on me. Mm-hmm. What am I going to do if I am rejected? Mm-hmm. What am I going to do if they don't like it? Because mm-hmm. everybody, so how am I, I'm going to get myself fortified inward. Yes. To be able to handle everything that goes with this. Yeah. So I, I look. I used to look at it as waiting, and that's a good word. But I, I try to shift it to preparing, mm-hmm. because I think the more aware we are, we see things different. Yes. You know, we see things a lot different as we prepare. Because mm-hmm. mm-hmm. preparing is really maturing. That's it. Yeah. That's, that is true. Getting ready. That is something. true. Yes. Yes, ma'am. Yes. So how do you stay motivated? Like with all the things you do, how do you stay oh, she motivated? At, she at the the motivator is in the room. <laughs> no, what it is, I'm, I'm, <laughs> if we give her a mic, I'm self-motivated. I, when I love what I do, mm-hmm. I wake up in the morning, I go to bed with it, I wake, mm-hmm. I, I, I will worry you to death if you're around me. Mm-hmm. You see that? Passionate I'm passionate. I'm passionate. And I'm sure I will, man, on the way down here, she, we could be riding and I'm, a whole thing just runs through my mind all the time mm-hmm. when I get mm-hmm. up. And that's why I was blessed, you know, when you came into my life because it was so many things I wanted to do. Mm-hmm. And with me, if I don't watch it, I'll try to do it all. Yes. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And mm-hmm. that slows the whole train yes. down. Yes. Mm-hmm. So I've learned, um, I stay motivated, man. Mm-hmm. When I leave here, I'm, I'm back in it. Mm. When I get in the car, mm-hmm. I'm back in it. That just, that's how I've been all my life. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Well, you know, I like what you said, that you really talked to her and that she kind of held you accountable and yes. kept you on track. Yes. So that means you kind of believe in mentorship Definitely. and coaching and things like that. Mm-hmm. And being a man of God yes, and man. being able to run people, I think it's wow. important, or manage people, I think wow. it's important to mm-hmm. know when wow. you need help. True. Yeah. True. Mm-hmm. True. yeah. So I really admire that about True. you that you said that. I like that. Yes, ma'am. Mm-hmm. I will stop and get help from, man. Mm-hmm. I. Mm-hmm. It, I believe what she knows can help me cut mm-hmm. corners. Mm-hmm. It can help me cut corners, but I can go do it myself. Mm-hmm. But it may take me eight years to do it when it may yeah. take eight months. Right. So that's that's one thing I've really been paying attention to is always keeping people around me who know more than I know. Mm-hmm. I may have the yes. vision, but they know more about that part than I do. Yeah. Right. So when did you right pick there, that up? I was young. I told you, I'm going to tell you, man, I grew up in the country, man, the real country. Mm-hmm. I grew up in the country where the, we called it the whole. Sand Ridge, the hole because okay. the road goes away and the whole thing turns into sand for real. So <laughs> that's the country. A, that's the real deal. That's the real country. So we had a corner store down there, mm-hmm. and I always I didn't talk a lot. Mm-hmm. I didn't talk. I didn't talk a lot at all. And but I I was always thinking. So I remember mm-hmm. being little, standing inside the the, the store, mm-hmm. and I saw Jolly Ranchers. And I'm like, they three cents. Mm-hmm. I could sell them for six cents. Mm-hmm. But I didn't like to talk. Yeah. Right. So I got a couple of people. If you sell these, I'll give you this mm-hmm. and do this. So I've always had that kind of enterprise mind, yes. right. but I didn't talk a lot. You mm-hmm. know what I'm so it was wow. kind of working against me for a little mm-hmm. while. But I knew how to recruit people. Yes. knew how to connect people to, well, let's get this thing going. Mm-hmm. And I don't have to know how to do everything. Yeah, you know? that's so important. Yes, ma'am. Wow. As a child. Yeah, a little yeah, kid. As yeah, a, as a kid, kid, knowing how to run a whole enterprise. I had, a, I had a cash box when I was like 10 years old. <laughs> wow. A real little cash box that you had the little key to and everything. Mm-hmm. I went mm-hmm. to the store. I had saved my money, and uh, I had got away from my mama. And when I came back to the line, I had a cash box. Mm. And she's like, what you going to do with a cash box? Mm-hmm. But she didn't know I had like $30 under my bed from candy. Mm-hmm. So when we got back and I put all the change into a little quarter, nickels, I did all mm-hmm. that. Mm-hmm. And she was standing at the door like, who I don't is even this know you. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. So now, if it was one thing, if you wanted to talk to this audience, and it was one thing you wanted to kind of say to them to motivate them and get them going, what would it be? This year, the Lord has dealt with me since mm-hmm. January about three, four things. Mega deliverance, mm-hmm. meaning mm-hmm. deal with yourself. Yeah. Deal with whatever is mm-hmm. going on with you. Deal with it. The second one is mega build. Mm-hmm. After you deliver it, it's going to be some empty areas. Mm. Build those areas. Mm-hmm. And that's when the mega abundance will come. Amen. We keep running to the abundance, mm. not wanting to be delivered, come on now. not wanting to be built <laughs> up. And then the last thing he told me was show up. Yeah. So a lot of the things I've been doing is hashtag show up. Mm-hmm. You have to be where you need to be to become who you're supposed to become. Mm. So we can't always stand like coming here 
I'm learning. Like I'm looking around this room. Yeah. And I'm like, I need lights. Mm-hmm. That's in my mm-hmm. mind. Mm-hmm. I need a real good camera. Mm-hmm. That's that's happening. So mm-hmm. me coming to see y'all mm-hmm. has opened up mm-hmm. another part. Yes. Yeah, exactly. Yes. Yeah, exactly. So. But I wouldn't have done that if I wasn't here. Yeah. So we have to show up, even sometimes if it's inconvenient, mm-hmm. show up. Mm-hmm. You never know who's going to be in the room. You never know what's going to be there. And I think one mm-hmm. thing I'm always, any room you're in, something you need is in it. Come on now. So that's why you need to show up. That's, yes. that's been my thing this year, to show up. Show up. Okay. Yeah, show up. I want to go back to the piece that you talked about, fixing yourself. Mm-hmm. Because you notice especially like in church at work yeah we always want to fix other people in marriage right. mm-hmm. Even mm-hmm. With our kids, we want to fix other people yes ma'am but nobody want to sit down and deal with what's going on with the inside of them mm-hmm. 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 Yeah. so like really with the conversation how would you start it to tell somebody to work on you mm-hmm. yeah yeah so what was your thing, journey to working on you I, uh to be honest with you, what the, the real thing was start, we start working on each other. We almost lost our marriage last year wow. because nobody wanted to bend. Mm-hmm. I'm who I am, mm-hmm. you who you are. We just yeah. you, nobody wanted mm-hmm. to bend. Mm-hmm. So we found a safe place. Mm-hmm. If you want to work on yourself, you're not gonna work on yourself by yourself. Mm. I like that. Oh, that's good. You're not gonna work on yourself by yourself because yes. you're not gonna show you. You're not gonna tell yourself everything. Yes. You need to yes. Know. yes. So we got some people that loved us equally, mm. and they loved us individually, mm. and we poured it out. The ugly, the bad, the ugly, and we went to a place where we wouldn't be judged, but mm-hmm. we would be corrected. Yeah. We try to we try to avoid correction because we're afraid of judgment. Mm-hmm. But those are they're two mm-hmm. different things. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Somebody who loves you will correct you. Mm-hmm. Somebody who wants to hurt you may just judge you. Come on, that's good. So you have to decipher: is this person judging me mm-hmm. or are they correcting mm-hmm. me? Mm-hmm. And so that's what we we both stepped into a major season of just correction. Thank you, Lord. And, it, and it helped us. It helped us rekindle because we had took rings off and everything. It was wow. right in the middle of everything God is doing. Yeah, we wasn't willing to look at each other at ourselves. Mm-hmm. So we were ready to just run from the whole thing. Wow. And that's a wonderful testimony yes, because I think it's happening everywhere. Yes, mm-hmm. ma'am. You know, and especially in church, it's yes, happening. Yes, ma'am. And we want to go and we want to have these happy faces. And <laughs> yes. Yes. Right yeah. yeah. okay. mm-hmm. yes, ma'am. When we could have really stopped and taken care of that. True. And I like that you said you needed help and you went to somebody yes, ma'am. to yes, get ma'am. help and you put it all out yeah. on yes, the ma'am. table. Yes. Right? yes, ma'am. And so I do think it's a time, uh, mm. even people watching, where you mm-hmm. got to put it all out yes, on the ma'am. table. Like, yes. this took a turn from where we were going. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> you got to put that stuff out on the table and keep it real so you can get some yes, help. Ma'am. And some healing in the word, he said, some deliverance. Deliver- yes. Yes. <laughs> yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Like ma'am. Deliverance. Mm. That's a powerful thing. And mm. I'd like to um, want to go to you just saying that you were able to go to a safe space. And mm. you touched on this maybe twice already. Mm-hmm. Kind of mentorship is what right. I hear in that. You know, mm. mentorship. Um, tell us. Again, with all of the things that you've been able to accomplish and even the things that you have coming, you know, what's your belief around the importance of mentorship? Mentorship is, to me, I was doing some studying a while back, a few weeks ago. And it, it, mentorship, you need three things, I think. You need a mentor, someone who's been where you're trying yes. to go. Mm-hmm. You need a coach, mm-hmm, someone mm-hmm. to push you. Yeah. Because mm-hmm. coaches see things that you don't see in yourself. True. And then you need a cheerleader. Mm-hmm. True cheerleaders. Mm-hmm. So we had people that was, you know, when I fall off, I, I got people that's going to lead me where I want to go, yeah. push me, yeah. and scream for me. Yes, you that know, is very you, good. You can't just have it one way. And a lot of times you don't even choose. You don't you really choose. It just happens. Mm-hmm. You know, it just mm-hmm. happens to where you're like, wow, I'm really, this is really happening right now. Mm-hmm. You know, I'm really here. Mm-hmm. This is really happening. So we got to be willing to deal with that. Yes. We got to be willing to deal with it, every mm-hmm. level of that because without that, mentorship mm-hmm. who really just looks at themselves and corrects themselves right right we're gonna touch the nice little soft spots mm-hmm. we're not dealing with the ugly stuff mm-hmm. and um a lot of things that we're dealing with i believe we're the generation now to deal with things in generations that's been ignored right mm-hmm. and i believe that's why we feel such a different heaviness from oh it. yes because i don't want this no more mm-hmm. i don't want to feel like this no more. i don't want to think like this no more right. so you have to go get help you have to go talk to somebody that's, that's really want you to win Mm-hmm. And, and it's going to get tight. It's going to get tough. It's, it's going to get rough. <laughs> we sat inside. Our first coaching session was inside of a, um, what you call it, a little sandwich. Jason's Deli for six hours. Wow. Six hours. We ate lunch and dinner in the same place. <laughs> it was that like desperate. That it was right. that desperate. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yes. Awesome. 
So what's your next? What is your next next? <laughs> well, you told us a lot, so I know you got yeah. a next next next. Yes. <laughs> the next is to get home. <laughs> <laughs> is to go to the crib. Uh, no, really, um, my focus now, we're going to lock in on Pauly now. We're going to lock in on Pauly and mm -hmm. get him moving where he needs to move. Because okay. um, I believe I, I'm getting nauseous popping on Facebook and another child has hurt themselves behind wow. a bullet. Yeah. And every time I look up, it's happening. So mm -hmm. I really want to get him in. I believe that piece of those five yeah. principles yes. that I have now is going to help the mm -hmm. material that's being made to go with the book. Mm -hmm. So I think mm -hmm. we'll be able to really be able to package that and put it in the hands of schools and youth groups yes. and whatever so we can have something they can learn from. And mm -hmm. go from. That's, my, that's the next thing that's really on my mind. Right mm -hmm. that's yes, now. awesome. Well, we're excited about all the things that you have coming up. Yes. And I know as we begin to wind down on our time today, you know, I would like for you to, you know, part of our show, we want to convey solutions and strategies. Mm -hmm. So before we leave today, can you give a solution or strategy for people being able to kind of press through the bullying piece, being able to press through on the mentoring, some of the things that you've touched on, if there were one strategy you can share right now? I believe the main strategy is, is coming as you were talking is get help. Yeah. Stop trying to do this stuff on your own, even if it's, if it's mental, physical, spiritual, mm -hmm. get help. You cannot... You're not going to get where you're going at the speed you should get there, constantly mm. trying to do it on your own. Yes. You're going to need some help. Mm -hmm. And I, that's the main thing is don't be afraid to get help. Mm -hmm. yes. mm -hmm. So tell us again how we can get in touch with you. Well, I'm, I'm <laughs> <laughs> Facebook, Liddell Wilson at Facebook. Um, like I said, Pauly has a website, www.paulytheprayingpup.com. And that's mainly, the, that's mainly the places. Facebook, inbox me. Yeah. Okay, that's pretty much all I do, you know. Yes, <laughs> yes, yes. ma'am. So we want to thank you for joining in on another episode of Your Talk Time with... With Lindsay Bivens. And Sonia Pelton-Sam. Make sure that you follow us on Facebook at Your, Your Talk, Talk Time. Time.